You're watching ACC Lacrosse on ESPN today from inside the dome, a top five matchup between two of the most storied programs in college lacrosse history. The fourth ranked and unbeaten Maryland Terrapins are in town to take on the three and oh and number five in the country, Syracuse Orange. Hi, everybody. I'm Chris Cotter. He's Paul Carcaterra. We're fired up. This crowd behind us is juiced. They're ready for a big game today. Here's the question everybody wonders. Syracuse, they've been making strides under third-year coach Gary Gate. Are they back now? Central New York thinks they're back. A lot of the lacrosse world thinks they're back. But in their way tonight, Cotter, is the Maryland Terrapins. And they've been the standard in college lacrosse the last decade behind John Tillman. Won more games than any program. I think the pressure is on Syracuse. They need to stamp a win in year three with Gary Gate because the rest of the lacrosse world wants that type of play. Well, speaking of the standard at Syracuse, the standard is number 22. And wearing the fame number 22 this year is sophomore Joey Spolina. Former number one recruit nationally. His anticipation as a passer has been elite. Gets the ball to teammates before they get to their spots. He's been dealing with over five assists per game. This guy's got X-ray vision, Cotter, and Syracuse's number 22 goes against Maryland's number one. The two storied numbers in college lacrosse, head-to-head, -head, Ajax Zapatello's an eraser of a defender, a technician who rarely is out of position. He's a top three defender nationally, and guess who's back? Logan McNaney, missed last season with a torn ACL. He was the tournament MVP when the Terps won the national championship. In the first few weeks of the season, He's been unconscious. Also back for Syracuse in net is Will Mark. Now a graduate student, the young man out of California brings a ton of experience and a backstop for them on the defensive end. It hasn't been, the issue hasn't been scoring with them in the first couple of years with Gary Gate. It's been faceoffs and defense, and they've shored that up in the offseason. Absolutely, and Will Mark's best friend early in the season has been Mason Cohn because he's winning faceoffs and he's allowing this young defense to kind of mature and come along. Two teams meeting at midfield. There's Gary Gate, the silver-haired slick back Gary Gate in his third season as the head coach. Of course, he was coaching the women's team 14 years here at the Qs and is widely regarded as the Michael Jordan, the Tom Brady of lacrosse, the greatest of all time. And John Tillman, what can you say about the job he's done with the Terps? Two national championships in the last six seasons. He's been phenomenal. When you give him time to prepare, he's like no other. His dedication to the team, the way he's built this program, culturally on the field, no stone ever unturned with Tillman. We mentioned face-offs for Syracuse. Mason Cohn, the transfer from Tufts going against the veteran Luke Weirman, and Weirman gets the better of him initially and gets possession, but Syracuse will take it on the turnover. And Clark, this crowd, lower bowl, completely full in front of us and on the far side. They've been waiting for this one for a while, now it's here. I think it's the most anticipated February at Syracuse since 2015 when they were number one in the nation part of that season lost in the quarterfinals to Johns Hopkins that team could have gone all the way to win a national title Joey Spillini we mentioned him in the open 22 and white the offense goes through him but there are a lot of pieces for Q's including that man right there Michael Leo takes the shot and it's turned away by Maryland's goaltender McNaney Still possession with Cues. There's English, the transfer from Princeton, 15. We'll mention those two Canadians, English and Stevens, a lot. Shot goes high in the air, stays with Syracuse. Here's another transfer in Christian Moulet. They're loaded, they're all over the field, these transfers for both of these teams. Got his defender hung up, Hiltz in front, shot by Spolina. Turned away by McNaney. Two big saves for him early. Turn on the tape. Against Richmond, against Loyola. Logan McNaney is on a revenge tour. A lot of the lacrosse world forgot about how good this kid is. Now a chance to see Maryland on the offensive end after the clear. And an early flag. It's going to be a delayed call against Syracuse. Syracuse was offsides. They'll keep the extra player on until we get the, the whistle blown. Here's Spanos. Now there comes the whistle. We'll get the offsides call against the Orange. Go, 
Miles on white 15. White 15 is offside. Second technical. He said it to 60. Our officials today, the Luxinger brothers, Brian and Tim and Daniel Beck calling the game. Maryland two for five thus far on the season. They got some shooters. Watch 45 and black. Daniel Kelly can really stretch a defense with a left-handed laser. And Danny Maltz, 37 and black. Inside is a fantastic crease finisher. Just saw Maltz with the ball in his cross on the wing. Reversing it on the far side. Inside Maltz opts not to take the shot. Here's Kelly. Quick ball movement by the Terps. Up top, couldn't get the shot off. Erksa had a mind to do it. Lost it on the transition. Maryland fighting for it in the middle of the field along with Syracuse, and the Orange come out of there with it. It's interesting. Syracuse will actually put a fresh five guys in when they play man down. It's a complete overhaul of the defensive unit. Five fresh guys whose job is to play man down defense. And I like it, Cotter, from the perspective that it keeps way more guys engaged, right? Your practices are more intense. These guys know their spots, and their number can be called. Spillane to the middle of the field, tries to get a step on Zapatello, can't do it, but gets it to the far side. Shot score, Orange! Luke Roa finds the back of the net, Syracuse on top early. Sophomore Roa. Sophomore Spalina, he feels the pressure. I don't think Maryland needed to slide there, Connor. I thought Zapatello was playing fine defense. He wasn't beat. Spalina will pick you apart if you slide too early. And Luke Roa, who is a righty, is about as two-handed as any player in college lacrosse. Look at him sling that lefty offside on Logan McNaney. But if you're Maryland, you have to trust that matchup with Zapatello. He's going to be on an island with Spalina. He's your best defender. Live and die by him. Roa's fifth of the year. And the Orange have gotten off to a dream start in front of this crowd here inside the Dome. Cohen and Weirman, we expect this to be a great battle all afternoon long. Alexo gets possession quickly in front. Hiltz had a notion, decided to pull it out. Syracuse will sub out. Finn Thompson will come in alongside Michael Leo. Ben Thompson, part of this strong Canadian contingent. And Gary Gate is assembling with the Orange, including, as we mentioned, the two transfers from Syracuse. Leo, the ball in his cross, now behind the cage to Moulet. Moulet uses the pick. Leo on the shorty, trying to get free. Does get in front of the net. Shot is high, we'll get a push in the back, maybe a crease violation. That's what it is, a crease violation. Turnover. Maryland thus so far is playing the pick game well against Syracuse. Syracuse likes to dodge with a Spalina on the right, with a Mule on the left, and send a pick around, goal line extended. What you have to watch, though, is they are pass ready right out of that pick. A lot of Dodgers use picks to become scorers. They do it to become passers. Great opportunity for Maryland. Bounce pass to the far side, now back up top to Spanos. And he'll wait for the Cavalry to check in. It's Ryan Siracusa. Siracusa, a little two-man game, tried to get it back to Chorus. And Molliver gives chase and keeps possession with the Terps. Spanos. Double team comes, someone's going to be open on the far side, and that's who it is. Shot! Mark goes down and makes the save, so both goaltenders making fantastic saves early. You ready for a goalie battle? We're getting it here early. This is high end. Two future professional goalies in Logan McNaney, Will Mark. Battle tested, can handle a high volume of rubber. Stevens has a wide open lane to the net. Steady opts to pass it off. And Roa couldn't handle it. Physical battle for the ball in the middle of the field, won by Maryland. 
Back to McNaney. Now the Terps will look to clear with Zapp on the near side. Gets it to the long pole of McDonald. See two LSMs today primarily for Maryland. Jack McDonald, Nick Alviti. One of the transfers from Vermont. Three transfers from Vermont. Paying dividends on the defensive end for the Terps. Flags come all over the place, but it's Ertza who buries it, tying things up at one apiece. The question here, Connor, does he land in the goal mouth or does he get pushed in the goal mouth? Great usage of the pick. There's some backside pressure there by Riley Figueres. That is a speed dodge by Ertza. Officials are talking this one over as we await word. See the half circle inside the crease, the goal mouth. You cannot land in there on your own. You can land in there if there's defensive pressure. Relax, let me call it. Get out of the box. Hey, we have a good goal. We have 35. Illegal body check. One minute. That was big Billy Dwan after the facts, right at the top. And this is what Gary Gate is arguing. So Erksa lands in the goal mouth, but he lands as a result of the late body check by Dwan. That's a good call. Dwan is making his presence felt. And that's one of those fouls you don't love having to be manned down if you're Syracuse, but you're establishing a physical presence if you're Billy Dwan. Now we're going to get a challenge here early, Clark, because Coach Gate, he's thinking that was a legal hit. I mean, I, I'm guessing that's what, what he's saying, but throwing the flag means he's not challenging the hit. He's challenging either the, a crease violation or the goal mouth violation because the hit isn't reviewable as to whether that's a penalty or not. And maybe that's being explained to him right now. Erksa gets by Figueres off the pick. Well, not in the crease, so that's not going to be an issue. We know he lands in the goal mouth. The question is, he was pushed in the goal mouth by Dwan. So I'm not sure what they're reviewing. That Those are facts. He would not have landed in the goal mouth if Dwan didn't hit him. Now, they called Dwan's hit illegal. That's not un You can't review whether a hit is legal or not. At first, I thought maybe Urxa landed in the crease prior to the goal. No. Nope. That's not the case. Nope. He lands in the goal mouth, but as a result of the illegal body check. No, he never stepped in at all. I'll come to you in a minute. After review, ruling on the field stands. It is a good goal. White is charged one timeout. So the review ends up being a good goal. Gary Gate loses the review, so he'll be charged a timeout. So he, he was thinking that Erksa stepped, it was in the goal mouth on his own accord. Prior to the illegal yes. body check. It was reviewed. Yeah, it, it, for those of you who, you know, these first couple of weeks of the season, we're using review now in college lacrosse. And essentially understand this, Anything that's goal-oriented in terms of timing on the clock, was his foot in the crease, was, was he in the goal mouth, all of that can be reviewed. And that's kind of what we've seen in the first couple of weeks, Paul. A lot of goal-related plays can be reviewed. High hits to the head can be reviewed as well and some others. And coaches are going to use those challenge flags more in the first half because you burn a timeout in the first half, it's not the end of the world. I don't love review in the regular season. I want lacrosse to get things right in terms of calling it properly. And you don't want to see teams losing games because of calls that shouldn't stand. But it slows the game down. And it puts teams in a position, I think, in terms of when are you going to use these challenge flags? Because some games they're being used. They have to come from the home team. Do they have the right equipment? 
Yeah. There, there's a lot of variables that I don't sort think we're out. there yet. Got to sort a lot out. Yeah, there's so much to sort out. So I would have liked to have seen us go through more of a of a crawl, walk, run type yeah. exercise with this. Have it just in conference championships across the board and in the NCAA tournament because you never want to see a season end with a wrong call. We're not ready for the regular season because not everyone has the technology. Not everyone's on the same page. Well, we've got it. And as you saw on that list as well, final four minutes of the game or in overtime, coaches cannot throw the challenge flag. All of those will be reviewed at the offic official's discretion. At any rate, it's a good goal from Erksa. And Sarich is going to get a chance here. Oh, man, down! Right off the faceoff. Mason Cohn has been an equalizer for Syracuse after three games. What was a weakness a year ago at the faceoff X has been a strength with the Tufts transfer. An incredible athlete, Connor, was a Division I hockey recruit, was going to attend Army West Point and play Division I hockey. Goes to Tufts, he plays two sports. It's well over 70% after three games. And they have been riding this guy, and the offense gets to feast as a result of Mason Cohn. Transferred in from Tufts, immediately voted as a team captain, shows you what kind of a, of a player he is and a leader he is. Going to go out to UCLA Law School, but putting that off for a year. Hoping to do some big things here with the Syracuse Orange, and he gives him a lead. And he's going to walk off, too, after we get the first whistle, because he got a delayed call against him here on a, on a slash or a hold. They will use two face-off specialists, Mason Cohn and Johnny Mullen, who just took that one, actually, after Cohn was gassed after he went to the goal and scored. 36, push, 30 seconds. Wait, 36, push, 30. Hey. Yeah, Mullen's going to sit for 30 seconds. There's John Mullen, the freshman. So here's the fresh five. There is not one starter right now playing defense on the man down unit for Syracuse. Five new players, it's their job to play man down defense. And I love the concept, but what happens if Maryland goes beyond the penalty and now you have your top offensive player not against your top D guy? Erks are from up top. Oliver decided not to fire it. Erksa will let it go. No, a nice pass inside, and Maryland buries it. Looked like Erksa was going to shoot it, pulled the string a little bit, found Chorus right on the doorstep. We're seeing the maturation of Braden Erksa. He scores that first goal on a speed dodge, this time in the extra man. He's on the opposite side of the offensive set. He looks like a shooter. He fools that Syracuse man down defense, thinking press. All eyes on Urksa. As the shooter, he becomes the passer. Chorus delivers. And now it's all about the defender. Ajax Zapatello has been the terminator, an absolute eraser against Spolina, who's delivered with a huge spotlight on him since he's been in eighth grade. Everyone knew about that kid in terms of his offensive prowess. Violation going to go against Mason Cohn, so Weirman will put it in play, and he's a threat to score, 52 in black. He'll stay on the field for a moment. Now he's thinking about it. Now he's going to check out, and they'll bring in Zach Whittier for more offensive power. Weirman dominated this matchup a year ago in College Park, and Maryland was able to completely control tempo. Coming off a of first-team All-American season when they won a national title, in 2022. Whittier up top. Now Brennan behind the cage. Good pass. Tough angle shot and a score! Daniel Maltz, you mentioned him inside earlier. What a beautiful shot coming back from X. There's two things about Maltz you have to worry about. His inside game scoring as a crease finisher. But he does a fantastic job, and I've seen him score dozens of goals when he has a short stick on him. 
He gets behind an X and then he floats and he uses that offensive awareness to see the space upfield. He lulls the defender to sleep. A lot of times teams will short stick Maltz and that's how he makes them pay. He floats from X above goal line extend. He's so deadly as a low angle shooter. Maryland back on top, 3-2. Weirman wins it to himself. But Malvin might take a step toward the middle of the field and fire. Instead, he'll back it out. I think Daniel Maltz is one of the most underrated players out there. 50 goal scorer in 2021. Lost his starting job in 2022 when they won the national title. When you short stick him, he makes you pay. Spanos inverted. Erksa. Back up top. Spanos looking to dodge from the wing. Molliver. Missed all of last year. Number four in black with an injury. Still working his way back. And he'll be scary when he's 100%. Shot clock still at 20 seconds. Great chance and a score by Maryland. Ball movement, as we would have expected from the start, Paul, has been fantastic. And Syracusa scoring his first of the day. We just showed the great Terp legends wearing the number one. I'm not sure this team has one yet. Braden Erksa could be one one day. But this team has depth. And they move the ball late in the shot clock, wearing down the Syracuse defense. And the awareness of Syracuse as a guy that's kind of waited his time. He's from the Atlanta, Georgia area where you call home. Bunch of kids like that on this Maryland team. Syracuse, Molliver, Erksa. The patience pays dividends. Scout team player early in his career. It's a very two-handed player, too, 38 in black. Cone wins this draw. This has been roughly even. Beerman and Cone. Cone with a nice move to get free. You know what I like about this matchup, too? Both athletes. These guys can run. They're strong as oxes. It's going to be a battle. I'm not sure the wings are going to be heavily involved in this game. Watching these face-offs right now, it looks like the winners went in it to themselves because there's some high-end wing play in this game. But as of right now, it's it's been about the guys at the X. Spolini gets it back. Working on Zapatello, two All-Americans. Zap falls down, Spolina had a little bit of an opportunity and a short stick, now Moulet comes up field, shoots, Why? He got hit late. And that flag comes out. I think it's Schaller. 27 in black. And you'll feel it if you get hit by Schaller. We were at the walkthrough. This kid was a hockey player in high school. I'll let him give us the call here. Seven. Cross check. Direct contact to the head, two minutes full time. Wow, now that's a big penalty. Two minutes full time. Yep, the referee, depending on how egregious it is, has the flexibility to move it from a one to a two. And that's what they did. Wow, that's... Yeah, that's one Schaller's going to watch on tape and be very upset that he hit him late. Yeah, we're at walkthrough with the size of Schaller, the force. I mean, this guy's legs are like Saquon Barkley's. Yeah, he's got trunks for legs. He definitely is a gym rat. But coach, you know, talking to Tills, he said sometimes he's like, he gets so physical, yeah. he gets penalties called against him because he's just, he just isn't even aware of it. That's one. You don't want to go man down against this unit. Seven for 17 on the year, deadly. Thompson. McDaney sees it. We go the other way with McDonald. Terps look to attack shorthanded. And now Malvin will just pull it out. Now the Terps are going to get a call. Oh, that's a big one. You were sitting on a two-minute. You played catch with Logan McDaney. That was too easy. And now Syracuse fouls. So I expect Maryland to take a big chunk of that penalty 
out of the mix. And this is exactly what Tills tells his team as you see Jack Brennan just hanging on. Now Leo's going to come out to challenge him, an offensive player on the defensive end for Syracuse. It's 41 seconds right now on the shot clock. They are going to bleed this down to about 10. There is zero reason when you're sitting on a man down on the other side to use clock. And we're going to flip the script. If they can kill this clock in terms of the man down, they're actually going to be extra after that kind of crossover in time. Clearly the plan from Maryland. And now Brandon is just hanging on to it. Dwan switched on him, so he's for Syracuse sick. Now they've got a pull on Brennan. But he just wants to play keep away. I don't know why they didn't go to the goal. They had a free play there. Why wouldn't you go to the goal at 10 seconds? You had a free play here if you were Maryland. Attack around 10 by the time you shoot, maybe five. That's a white seven interference, 30 seconds. White number seven yeah. interference, 30. Reset to 60. So let's take a look at Michael Leo on the call. Yeah, he pushed him from the back. Maybe their legs got caught up. Maryland and Syracuse are even. I think there's still time left if you count up the numbers. Should be five on five here. For 17 seconds. Yes. Five on five for 17 seconds. And then you're extra for 13. And this, and again, Molliver is just going to want to hang on to it here until they're man up. And then make that one charge to the goal and you're, to your point earlier. Boy, they may have to just keep possession. Yeah, Kelly's coming on. Now they're going to be six on five. They can run a play here. They're extra. Here's Kelly coming out of the box. Shot misses from high. That was Murphy let it fly. Disaster sequence by Syracuse. Finn Thompson staring down McNaney. Throws it in his stick, and then Leo gets the penalty. Best case scenario for Maryland. All even strength here, so that two minute non releasable call doesn't come back to bite Murphy. And Maryland, and he buries it. Well, if at first you don't succeed, that first shot went high. That one didn't. And they keep the possession from that power play man up opportunity. Murphy with a sweet roll. You know what I love about this roll? First of all, there's no contact here by Vinny Trujillo. You got to get up in the body. Murphy plants that right foot and in one motion kind of catapults and lets it go. If you're a defensive midfielder there, you have to be up in the body against a shooter like Murphy. We've seen him absolutely sling it. The lead and the momentum now squarely on the shoulders of the Maryland Terrapins. It's 5-2 late in the going here in the first quarter. Cohen and Gervin still battling. Cohen's going to pick it up. Possession to Syracuse. Look at the ride by the Terps. Stevens will settle things down. Get it to Roa. Here comes Burt Whistle. He's got room to run if they can get it to him, and they do. Stevens, man, take a shot. McNaney was on it. I thought he could have shot earlier. Logan McNaney makes every save look so easy because he's so patient. There's no jumpiness to his game. He sits on a shot and then reacts. A lot of goalies have antsy feet. They're jumpy. McNaney is so poised and believes in his craft and his scout. Unbelievable body language, too. Stamos almost lost it on the far side, was able to get possession back, though. Here's Brennan. Siracusa has a goal, lost his footing. Ball moving to the far side. 
And a skip pass, try to get it to Syracuse. It goes wanting. Here comes Carter Rice from that rope unit. Hits Leo coming out of the box. Hughes should hold for this last scoring opportunity. English gets his hands free, though, shoots wide, stays with Syracuse. Nice speed dodge by the Princeton grad and transfer, Sammy English, 15 in white. Lay loses it. McDonald picks it up. Still plenty of time for Maryland. Erksa over the zap, thought he might let it fire. Instead, he loses it. Now Syracuse loses a stick. Molliver gives chase. But he's going to run out of time. Horn sounds to end what was a very entertaining and eventful first quarter. The man in the arena after one's been Logan McNaney. The talk has been the Syracuse offense, while McNaney and this Maryland defense have something to say, Cotter. Back and forth we went early. Maryland took the lead and momentum towards the end of that first quarter, 5-2 after one. In applied economics. You'd be okay with that as a Georgia I, Tech guy, I not me. I don't know if I could get that degree. I'd take me five or six years of trying. Ball still loose. Possession to Maryland. You know, on the flip side, too, Will Mark only has the one save. So Maryland has been able to solve Mark, who down at Chapel Hill a year, or College Park a year ago, he was amazing in that game. Daniel Kelly running out of the box. You'll see 45 play some attack, play some midfield. Keep an eye on Molliver's minutes as he continues to get closer and closer to 100%. Coming back from the knee injury he suffered in the fall of 2022. Maltz. Erksa. Thought about a little two man game instead, it comes back up top. There's Murphy on the far side. 15 to shoot. Maltz working on the shorty. Alexo had an eye on him. Erksa trying to get to the net. Can't pass. Broken up. This is a big possession for Syracuse. I feel like Maryland, since five minutes into that first quarter, Cotter, they completely controlled the tempo of this game. The Syracuse offense, which has been lights out, in 2023, when they were all young and made up of a ton of freshmen three games in, they are going to frustrate this unit if the tempo and the ability to control on that other end continues. Spolina trying to use the Thompson pick. Rolls back to his right. McNaney sees it all the way. If you see Joey Spelina make that move, a lot of times he comes up left side goal line extended and he goes behind the back. He increases his angle. And a lot of times that would be low and away on a lefty goalie. That time he just shot right to the stick of Logan McNaney. Lay with a nice job causing that turnover on his ride back to Syracuse. Maryland's done a nice job taking the air out of this building, Hart. They have. Can Hughes get it back? Thompson inside. Hiltz. English. Tough angle. We haven't seen the ball movement like we saw in the first couple of weeks, first three games for Syracuse. Well, this is a different defense, and it's a different goalie. And they have a cover guy in Ajax Zapatello, who's going against Spolina right now. They're trying to send a lot of picks his way. 
You see the fundamental play, too. He knows when to body Spolina. He knows when to play him in space. When you watch Zapatello on tape, fundamentally, he's, he's almost flawless. Leo loses it. Now he gets it back. Still 20 to shoot. Hiltz, maybe for the first time today, got open, but the pass looked like Moule wasn't looking for it. See, that's my point. A lot of the slick plays that have worked for him over the last three weeks just aren't going their way today. Yeah, they're not in sync. That's one where Hiltz, I thought, could have shot. And I think maybe Mule thought he was going to be a shooter. Great ride by Joey Spolina. Yeah, McNaney's in trouble here. He's out of the net. Spolina's going to let it fly. Instead, he gets it back. Finn Thompson scores. Oh, it hit the back of the net. Oh, it hit the back of the net. Well, the crowd thought it was, too, so I don't feel so bad. Finn came into this game two for 13 shooting. He's one of the more talented young players in the country. Now he's 0 for 2. As a shooter, it is critical to get that first goal after the slump because then you start thinking too much. And I think 23 and White, skill-wise, I mean, he's a guy that will play in the PLL, will play in the, the Pro Indoor League for a decade. He's that skilled. He has to find his shooting groove. John Tillman calls a timeout. Maryland up 5-2. Twentieth meeting between these two teams. Syracuse, they've dropped the last five of them, including the last two in a row. And 2022 Tawarton winner, national champ, Logan Wisnaskis was feeling it in the dome. Another lefty the following year, his replacement, Daniel Kelly, had four of his own. Down in College Park, a little twister action. The Cues played him tough, but Maryland too deep, too great at the faceoff with Luke Wehrman and too much John Tillman game planning. Tills in his 14th season, now directing stars and future stars like Ray Nerksa. You know, one thing in talking to Tills yesterday in the shoot around, he gives a lot of responsibility to his captains and his seniors. Oh yeah. They ran the whole walkthrough yesterday. He just sat there and talked with us. He asked them, you guys ready? You done? Yeah. Oh, they're done, okay. If you say they're done, then they're done. It's a culture. You know, when he got there, he had guys like Michael Earhart, right? And then you have Rambo and Heacock. And then Logan Wisnaskis and the Jared Bernhards of the world. They they learn from the prior leaders, how it's done. Dirks have got free. There's Mark. Okay. And I'll say this, speed-wise, there's no one who can match feet with 10 and black right now. He's flying in the dome. Speaking of flying, Carter Rice, Stevens now. Rice and Juan check out. Rosen, Burt, Whistle. Roa, Ro, I should say, not Rosen. Here's Hiltz. Will he shoot this time? See one hand that had to go to the backhand. It didn't work. Nice catch. I feel like Hiltz comes off that pick, and he probably could shoot it right away. And then he waits another beat or two to become the passer. Now Murphy goal line extended. Here's Brennan coming in. Whittier behind the cage. Molliver. Whittier behind the cage. I've seen a lot of inverting from 13 and black with the Terps. He's behind the cage right now as a midfielder, taking the defender out of his element up top. Kelly on the shorty here. Nice catch by Whittier. Good ball movement by Marilyn Erksa. Doesn't have an angle. Try to feed it to Molliver, just couldn't connect. You'll see a lot of different pieces to the puzzle with John Tillman and his offense. Coach Phipps, interchangeable parts. They want six offensive players to be all interchangeable. Midfielders go behind. Attackmen play the high wings, which we've seen with Braden Erksa. 
Syracuse just gets it cleared in time. Got to clear it by the 60-second mark on the shot clock. I would venture to say the next time Owen Hiltz comes off a pick, he's going to shoot. He's had a couple of opportunities and hasn't pulled the trigger. Leo. Maryland's short stick D middies have answered the bell. That was the question mark. The rest of the team, I think there's a lot of depth. These shorties have played the Syracuse midfielders well. Yeah, they've had some injuries there on that rope unit. Hiltz loses it. Oh, just gets it. Not sure whether he meant to do that or not, but it's, it's to Leo. Here's Leo now working on the shorty. Shoots high. You'll watch Syracuse likes to dodge with their midfielders on a 45 degree angle between two and three o'clock because then it allows Spelina to be behind the cage in some hung positions in Ajax. Wow. Kicks it to himself. Now trying to pick up the loose ball in the corner. Does it. The cause turnover and that's a hell of a ground ball. Ajax Zapatello played with Brett Makar, first team All-American, two time Big Ten Defender of the Year, but a lot of the time Zapatello got the one matchup depending on who it was. He's played Connor Schellenberger for Virginia the last two years. McDonald in a little bit of trouble here. Gets out of it. Now to Nick Red, defensive midi. He'll get it in the stick of Eric Spanos. Still 5 2. We had a flurry of action early in this game, and these two teams have settled in a little bit. This game was 2-2 before you could blink an eye. Syracuse hadn't scored in a long time. Spanos working on Rice, now behind the cage. Molliver trying to use a pick back up on top. Here's Murphy near side. Spanos tried to swim. Rice wanted nothing to do with it. Only three to shoot. Going to have to let it fly. They won't do it. Shot clock violation. Here comes Cuse. And they've got Ertz to hung up on the defensive end. Here's the matchup. Knowing Joey Spelina, too, and how competitive he is, he's going to continue to attack Ajax Zapatello. 22 against one. See, Chiefs hasn't scored in 18 minutes of game time. Roa, got free, bounces it wide. Stevens gives chase, it'll stay with the orange. Using a Burt Whistle pick. Lane just gets crunched. They're timing their slides, their support defense, the way that they're getting through their picks. This defense has been dialed. The 80's been dialed. Denies Roa. Six saves now for McNaney. Defensive coordinator Jesse Bernhardt has developed a reputation in terms of the way that he scouts and the way that he holds his team accountable. His boys are buzzing on that side of the field. Whittier is going to check in. Here's Erickson. Garris hung up. Still plenty of time to shoot. Whittier, top. Maltz. Had the matchup be light, but passed too high for Murphy. If you're Syracuse here, this possession, where does the offense come from? First three games, it's been Joey Spelina averaging almost nine points a game. Right now, he's got the one assist only against Ajax Zapatello. You have some veterans, those grad transfers from Princeton and Sammy English 
and Jake Stevens, who have big game ability. Middle of the field. Turnover. Syracuse is going to come up with it. Got just the one timeout because Coach Gate used the one for the challenge. Now on 20 minutes without a goal. Leo down the alley. Forced wide. That's going to be a flag. And a hit to the head to boot. That was smoke. The second it came off of Leo's stick. This shot was unstoppable. McNaney has been incredible, but you see the release too. Watch the end part of this release. It's cradle, 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 and then in that motion of that last cradle, looks like he's going to take another step upfield, and then the deception in the answer with Michael Leo. What a shot. And they'll face it off with Syracuse man up. Full time, one minute call against Maryland with that hit to the head. Not all face-offs are created equal. This would be one. And you have a guy like Luke Weirman who's so battle-tested. It looks like there might be a timeout here. This next face-off is massive. So the hit was before the goal, so there's still a face-off. Wasn't a dead ball foul. Looks like Maryland calls a timeout. This is under official review here, Carr. They're reviewing how serious of a, of a penalty this is. The officials can do that on a hit to the head. Yes, that was one minute, unreleasable, full-time served. They can review this and turn this into a two-minute. We saw it earlier, too. Yeah. Or they could even reduce it if they want. Any hit to the head, the officials have the ability to look at review and to see, to get a clearer look at how serious of a penalty that is. I don't see any shot they they make this less than one minute full-time serve. I think, I think the question here is to go to two. Right. Josh Kaufman is the guilty party. And on a side note, it's good to see 28 and Black back out there, coming back from a knee injury himself. They're going to change this from one to two. Kaufman getting back, as you mentioned, a 60 year senior, two ACL Well, it's going to be joints. After he do, it's overturned. Bounds on black, too late. We have direct contact to the head. Two minutes, full time. That's big right now. And you are right. This faceoff is huge. Massive. Maryland wins the faceoff. They can all but run 80 seconds of that two minutes. We saw the last time there was a two minute right. penalty, right? Syracuse did not cash in. McNaney made the stop. But if Maryland ended up scoring on the next possession. If Cone is sharp here and extra sharp in the next two minutes, it could be a make and take it scenario. I mean, that's how important these next two minutes are from the faceoff dot. Exactly, because it's full time served. Two graduate students, veterans. Mason Cone applied his wears at Tufts before transferring in the offseason. Luke Weirman doing it for years for Testudo. Cone Syracuse. got it. Yep. McDonald got possession. Check that Matt right. Gary Gate did not have to burn a timeout there. He still has one in his pocket. And this is a unit that led the nation in extra man goals a season ago. Burt Whistle, nine and white, was the top scoring player in power plays nationally. Number two was 22, Joey yeah. Spelina. Burt Whistle had 11 last year, Spelina had 10. Now Hiltz to Leo, scored moments ago. Thompson up top. That's 40 and white. It's, it's going to be a. Kellogg, specialist, and Syracuse scores. Maryland.
Barnes packing it in, daring for someone to shoot from the outside. How about the versatility of Seven White? The shot prior that he scored was a three-quarter release that stung the top shelf. This time, McNaney thinks he might be going high to that same spot. Where does he shoot, Cotter? Low. Low. Because it's full time once again. Huge face off. Syracuse got one of them back. And now Tills wants to call his second and final timeout in his half. Still a man up for a minute and four seconds. For me, that face off was so big for Mason Cohn in many ways. He's been well over 70% on the season, but he played. Some teams in competition that are in no way, shape, or form in the same league as Luke Weirman. That faceoff showed me the gut, showed me his, his competitiveness and the way that he's able to lock in against who was the nation's top faceoff specialist two years ago. Mason Cohn, Torrey Pines High School, played for Jono Zissi. And I spoke to John O in the offseason. He said, believe the hype on this guy. He will make the jump from Division Three to Division One." Gary Gate knows he's a Division One athlete. There's so many great players in Division Three that just need this opportunity, like Mason Cohn. And he showed us there. He's a battle-tested athlete. There's a good look at Cohn coming from Tufts. Jumbos, runners up last year in D3. Salisbury took the title. See that captain, the C on his jersey means a lot for a transfer to come in here to instantly generate the respect from his teammates that Cone has been able to do. And he's given an offense with a guy like Michael Leo. Gary Gate told me in the fall, Michael Leo is going to have a breakout sophomore year. It appears that way. We know about him as a shooter. He has some creativity in his bag too. Look at this behind the back pass. He gets the defense to shift upfield. All the eyes, the bodies against Colgate. Thinking upfield, Finn Thompson, his classmate, cuts off the middle part of that field. Down the alley in the pipe. Michael Leo has been creative, and he's been electric with his shooting tonight. Syracuse wins it again. That's the first time we really had to see the wing play come into effect. And Jake Stevens, the transfer from Princeton, he's kind of like the college version of a Zach Courier who plays for Andy Copeland and the Water Dogs in the PLL. You throw him anywhere on the field, he's a chameleon. That's what they brought him in to do, to help the faceoffs. Hiltz shoots a tough angle shot, ping pongs in front, racing the ball on the sideline. One by Maryland. That's a big play right there. Huge play by Riley Reese. Coming in on the man down. And he hustles closest to the ball when it goes out of bounds. Riley Reese is one of those young defenders. He's going to come along as Mother Kathy's, the coach of the Maryland Terps women's lacrosse program, which beat Syracuse in overtime today. His father, Brian, was a legendary long stick midfielder for Dick Adele in the mid 90s. I played against him. He was not that much fun to play against and he talked a lot of junk. <laughs> Final minute of this first half. Chiefs said in a long drought they've scored the last two to crawl back into it. Irksa. Now he's got his defender hung up. Siragusa shoots wide. Another race to the ball, won by Maryland. Fans here don't believe it. These guys are selling out, Cotter. Erksa loses his footing. Erksa's losing his footing on these quick change of directions. I think he needs to speed dunk. Look, 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 Oliver saved by Mark. And in the crease, great pass, but Mark was up to the task. That Final woke seconds. the dome up, Cotter. Final seconds for the orange. Gary Gate wants a timeout. He realized that Carter Rice didn't have anywhere to go with it. 
I think he wanted to get it earlier than three seconds. Yeah, he wanted it at five. We were talking about Logan McNaney in the first half making ridiculous stops. That is insane. I mean, Molliver has the ball right in front of Will Mark, throws a couple of fakes. Mark actually bites on it, leaves his feet, and somehow makes that stick stop. That is clearly the save of the night for Will Mark. He's smiling, and he should be. Just got a piece of that with the stick. Look at the players on the Tuarton watch list from this game. No surprise, Ajax Zapatello, Luke Weirman, Mark Spelina, Stevens. This is what I look for in three seconds. Owen Hiltz, the ball's kind of up that higher area by the our right side of the restraining box, but that's where a natural lefty will be able to operate with his stick to the outside. Owen Hiltz is one of the best through passers in college lacrosse. He can throw a 30-yard a pass on a dime. If I was Syracuse, I somehow would have Owen Hiltz with the ball. And on the backside, I have some cutters coming from that right pipe area if I was Syracuse because you don't have time for a dodge. Look at that stop. Great save. The officials are making sure the time is right. When that timeout was called, great save by Mark. Denying Molliver. He's fired up two and goal. Now look at the timing. Ten seconds. Rice gets into a little bit of trouble here, and I'm sure Gate is I, I think it is five. Yep. Maybe even six. If he called the timeout when he first stepped in the box, which you have to, you can't call it before then. That was around five or six yeah, seconds. That's what Gate was saying. See right here he's saying that's five seconds on the clock, so they'll check it. Thank you. Yeah, I think the officials are gonna say the replay is inconclusive to them as to when the whistle was blown. <laughs> He's not happy. That uh, changes everything. He's got a good sense of humor about it. Because at six seconds, you could dodge. Right. At three, you can't. So that's why I would give the ball to Owen Hiltz, and I would let him throw one of those 30, 40 yard zip passes from the left side to the bottom right, coming off a couple picks. You know, you can put a righty like a, a Joey Spelina and Finn Thompson playing a pick game with, with Owen Hiltz starting the ball. And Owen is starting with the ball. So. Look for him to throw a dart and some pick action between Spelina and Thompson. You want a righty finishing, not Mule. Mule two and White's a lefty. He'll pick. It's going to be English, Thompson, or Spelina. Try to feed it in. It's picked off, and the horn's going to sound in the half. Syracuse got on the board first. It was 2-2 in the blink of an eye, and then Maryland went on a little bit of run. Both teams settled in before Syracuse used a man-up situation to get a couple of goals late to make this a one-goal game at the break. You're watching ACC Lacrosse on ESPN inside the Dome. Maryland and Syracuse getting set to start the second half. Great crowd today, as we would have expected with all the anticipation and electricity in this town coming into this game. Maryland, you know, they kind of took the air out of this crowd a little bit. It took a rally in the second quarter by Syracuse to get it back. Look, the talk of the town and in lacrosse was the Syracuse offense after three weeks, right? Like nationally, Maryland plays some good defense. They've been playing good defense for the last, I don't know, 40 years since the Dick Adele ever. For me, the Ajax Zapatello and Joey Spelina matchup was, was much anticipated, and it had everything we wanted. Ajax Zapatello is showing you why he's a preseason first-team All-American. Spelina only has the one assist, and I think Spelina is such a vital piece of this offense in terms of being the conductor, being the quarterback, and getting everyone involved. For Syracuse to win this game, Spelina will have to be heavily involved in the second half. Interestingly enough, too, starting this, this second half, as you see Ajax Zapatello is... You know, he, him and his defenders kind of held Syracuse scoreless for an almost 20 minute stretch. Well, right now, Maryland is at almost 18 minutes scoreless in this game. Yeah, they're communicating at a really high level. But also, I, I think they're daring Syracuse to beat them with outside shots. They're kind of packing it in because they know the quick passing of Syracuse can cripple you. And they're taking that away by playing very constricted defense in terms of a team defense perspective. There's the athleticism shown by Cone. First, he wins the draw to himself, and he brings it all the way in deep into the offensive zone before running off. That has been a great battle. We anticipate that battle 
of two individuals to continue throughout the entire second half. Weirman and Cohn at the faceoff dot. Syracuse got two quick goals from Michael Leo to end that first half to close the gap to within one goal. Looking to even the score. Leo thought about taking another tough angle shot. Instead, he gets it behind him. Moulet. Here's Spolina. Leo's confident with the two goals, and Maryland has a short stick on him. Spolina can't get underneath Zapatello. Now the help comes, gets it back to Leo. Leo to the middle of the field, shoots high. He's lucky that one went high because that was on cage. No way that was going past Logan McNaney. Moulet looking to dodge. He has been kept under wraps. English shoots, bouncer. Stays wide. Watch McNaney's body language. Even on the wide shots, he's on every shot. Only 10 to shoot for Spillane. has got to recognize it. Good look inside. Thompson, McNaney make the save. Thompson just shrugs his shoulder as he runs back. What do I got to do? He's such a good player, and typically, when you watch Finn Thompson over the last year and change, he never just shoots the ball. There's always some kind of deception in his shot. He forces the goal, you think, one way by dipping the shoulder. There's the, the head fakes, there's the stick fakes. There was no type of deception or fake to get McNaney off his line. Terps trying to end that drought. Now approaching 20 minutes. Spanos on the shorty. He inverts as all of these Terps midfielders will do. Stutter step. Goes back to his right. Now to Oliver behind the cage. He's got his defender hung. Looking for a cutter. Finds one in front. Scores! Erksa. When you cut in that position, typically you want the stick on the outside shooting lefty. Erks is a righty. He never puts it to the outside, he keeps it inside, but look how quick the release is. And what he does a beautiful job of is he continues to go towards the goal when he catches that. If you're a right hander and you fade away, you've lost your angle. Erksa knows if he's going to keep it in his strong hand, he has to stay as north-south as possible on that cut. I like the following chorus, too. He followed right yes. on Forrest's hip. Syracuse bit for the first cut. He was the second. Weirman, not afraid to shoot. Instead, he gets it to course on the far side, and Mark makes the save. Four save, just the fourth save of the game for Mark so far. He's had to work for all four. This was a unit a year ago that got sliced and diced defensively. They are playing really sound lacrosse. I mean, they've held Maryland to six goals, five in the first half. They've done their job. The offense needs to step up. Twister! That's the second outstanding goal we've seen on the night from Roa. The timing of this twister is what makes it happen. He's out of angle, no shot. Can't put in his left hand because he's going to get checked. He changes to his left, it's in front of his body, he gets checked. The last second twister, and the timing is perfection right here. That increases his angle as if he was to shoot left-handed. But he didn't have the time to make the switch, Cotter, so it's either backhand behind the back or it's twister. And tonight, it's Twister. You can see the love he's getting from his orange teammates. They appreciate the creativity. Syracuse back down a goal. Violation on the faceoff dot. It's going to go against Weirman. To amplify the two-handedness of Luke Roa, his first goal today was an outside rip with the left hand. That was a right-handed Twister. You tell me what hand that dude is. Yeah. 
It's been impressive. As has Leo. He's got a couple on the day. Full head of steam. Can't quite get the angle. Zap just shuts it down. Here's Spolina. English, the transfer from Princeton. Got it back to Finn Thompson. Swim's got his right hand free, but Danny saw it all the way. No questionable shot will land on Logan McNaney tonight. He's in a three-week zone, or maybe he's in a two-year zone because he took last year off. MVP of championship weekend when the Terps won it all in 2022. He looks the same. Yeah, Coach Tillman talked about how he just passed the one-year anniversary of getting the injury early last year. Get his confidence is back. And he rehabbed with Molliver, who's behind the cage right now, four and black. It's different for an offensive player when you have to cut so much, though. Whittier had a brief moment where he was open. It was shut down. Here's Brennan. Working on Rice the shorty. Back to his left. Nothing doing. That pass goes awry, and Mark covers up. It's 11 turnovers on the day for Maryland. Figueres picked off. Not a good look. Alvidi, here he comes. That's a horrible turnover. Molliver. Oh, good luck! Arts to come finish, and his mark made a great save. Mark bailed Figueres out. Figueres owns Mark Dinner. That was a hell of a pass, too. <laughs> Through all kinds of traffic. That would have been a beautiful goal. Mark says, all for not. That save late in the second quarter when he robbed Maliver, he just looks different body language-wise. We have an incredible goalie battle tonight. Great goalie battle, great face-off battle, too. Two top five teams. This one promises to go all the way down to the wire. Spillane up top. Burt Whistle, that pass, or that shot rather, was deflected. And when you have a great goalie battle and a great face-off battle, six to five can be electric because they're closing runs and they're creating runs. Roa. Back to his left, he shoots wide. That race was won by Stevens. maybe has got to hustle back in net. Tills doesn't like seeing that with the knee. Told me that the other day, he's like, I don't know. <laughs> the further he gets away from Cage, the more nervous Coach Tillman gets. But he looks sharp tonight. Stevens. That's a tough angle shot, looks like, sounded like that, hit Zap. Molina tracks it down. Spolini got room with the pick, and he scores. That pick finally freed 22 up. We talk about deception. That's the equalizer on an incredible goalie. You come in, and you shoot without a fake. You shoot without changing levels. You are toast. Spolina knows that. He has ice in his veins. The pick is set perfectly. There's no switch. It looked like Zapatello originally thought he could get through the pick. So the communication breakdown happens. The way that Zap came off that pick showed me that he wanted not to switch. He wanted to keep the matchup to get through the pick. And Spolina knows, you come around goal line extended, you take those extra steps. You make those extra fakes. First time we've been even since 2-2 in the first quarter. Syracuse riding hard here. Look at Goulet giving chase to Zapatello. He's got to get it back to McNaney.
Maryland's able to get it across the midfield line. Syracuse. Maltz. Big shot just barely wide of the target. Doesn't this 6-6 game feel like there's so much edge uh, and every, so much tension? Every shot on net is, you know, earth-shattering. As Erksa has the defender hung up, Spanos took the hit, absorbed the contact back up top. Here's Molitor. Erksa GLE is going to go behind the cage. Molitor up top. Pass! Wow! Goodness, the save by Mark. Again, another great pass by Molliver, and it ends up being no goal because Mark has been sensational. Check out the left side of your screen. That is the second ridiculous stop where Mark leaves his feet and stonewalls the Terps. Preserving this 6-6 tie. Leo now, as you take a look at that save. Yeah, that stop was, I was not going to allow you not to see that again. <laughs> it's so good. It's sort of like check and checkmate with he and McNaney. Now Leo's trying to get free, Finn Thompson up top. Spillane and Ajax again. Thompson setting the pit, but Ajax rolls over the top of it. Spillane got a shot off, and Thompson was almost there for the rebound. Now we'll get a call. We're going to get a loose ball push. That was incredible how he got that shot off. Zapatello was draped all over him with his offhand, one-handed, lets that go. Loose ball push against Merrill, and those stays with Syracuse. You're seeing a little more confidence in the attack play by Syracuse. The first five goals were all midfield goals. Spillane's first of the night was the first for the unit. Behind the back pass to Finn. Closely defended. English on the run. Leo. Didn't have much of an angle. Back behind the cage to Spolina. Comes a pick. And Jax is able to get around it behind the back. That is such a fast shot. In the first quarter, I thought he should have done that. When Zapatello and Spolina were engaged on goal line, he shot it right-handed and lost his angle. That behind the back shot is it's too fast, it's too hard to track for him not to do that when he gets above GLE. It's amazing you can get that kind of pace on that shot. Now he loses his shoulder. Slide comes and leaves English open up top. Makes one man miss, makes another man miss, and scores! That's the goal of the day so far. This is amazing. Who needs a left hand when you're Sammy English? They talked about the two Princeton transfer middies. We're going to change the complexity of this team. The dome is alive. It's rocking. Welcome to the dome, Sammy English. If you wear 22 at Syracuse or one at Maryland, you're the guy. We've just been fortunate tonight that it's best on best. And in the first half, Ajax Zapatello was playing the body beautifully on Joey Spelina. But Spelina's a bit of a junkyard dog. He'll find ways to get involved in the game. And it was the pick game in the third quarter that allowed him to get that unassisted goal. The first goal from the attack unit for Cuse. And we have a dandy in store.
Maryland again on a scoring drought, this time seven minutes, and it's the Q's on a run. Three straight goals to take the lead. Their first time leading the game since it was two to one in the first quarter. Maryland's gonna call a timeout. That's a really good timeout. That is a really good timeout. You have a pole down there being harassed by Billy Dwan the third. You can hear the pads yeah. popping from up here. You know, you wanna you wanna keep that one in your pocket for late. But this is a pivotal time in the game. It's the first time Cuse has taken a lead since the first quarter. First couple of minutes yeah. of the game. And you feel like momentum might be shifting. That is why Tillman just understands time and situation of a game. And that's why he's won two national titles. And his team, the last decade, has been unmatched from a winning perspective. You know, it's interesting. We were on um, the Quintessential podcast with, with Quint earlier this week and just kind of talking about Maryland. I thought Quint made a good point. Last year's team, they'll never admit to this, and maybe it isn't the case, but Q kind of felt like maybe they had the hangover from 22. 22 is one of the great teams yeah. in the history of college lacrosse, and last year's team maybe had to live up to being the encore from that 22 team, and they never could quite get into sick. You know, they got hammered by Michigan in the Big Ten Championship game, lost in the first round of Cornell in the, in the uh, NCAAs. I just feel like this team is kind of flying under the radar. Yeah. Everyone's talking about Penn State at the start of the year. Yep. Michigan now finally a team to deal with, and yet here they are. Yeah, Tillman's still here. Look, 2022 was the perfect storm. They had so many pieces to the puzzle back from 2021 when they lost that heartbreaker to Virginia in the national championship. That season started that day. Luke Weirman becomes a first-team All-American face-off specialist. He gives that offense that puts up video game numbers led by Logan Wisnaskis, who eclipsed the 100-point mark in 2022, and he wins the Tawarton. The ball moves so quickly in that offense, you'd have whiplash watching them. So last year's team, they lost some guys, and they probably tried to, to live up and play perfect. And perfect was for 2022, not 2023. So now this team, you feel like they have house money. Who's talking about them? Right, yeah. And they, even, even coming into this game, you know, the, the, the talk is Syracuse. Syracuse back, Syracuse this, yes. Syracuse that. The talk is this. Denver, I mean, Duke, Notre Dame, and Virginia. Everyone thinks they're the three best teams, and they might be right. And Syracuse is back. That's kind of what we've been talking about in February. How about Maryland? How about them now trailing by a goal? Final moments of this third quarter. It has been a game of runs. Spanos, no angle. Here comes the slide, and it's effective. Still plenty of time to operate offensively if you're the Terps. Erksa. Draws a lot of attention. Syracuse up top. Maltz gets pushed down. That'll be a flag. And physical play just as the whistle sounds. Yeah, it's chippy. Folks here in the dome not in agreement with that call. Flag came out immediately. So the timeout was to give your offense an opportunity to get into the flow. And then it results in a push by Levine with possession for 30. Watch Maltz, he'll start at the top, but he'll end inside. Kelly's inside will get to the left shooting spot. 45 in black. Here he is. We have 45 on this side and 55 on the other, Murphy. There's Murph. Molliver. Molliver's going to give chase, and he's going to get there just before the ball gets to midfield. Full strength. Still, Maryland's able to get a shot off, and Mark 
is there to deny Kelly. Well, they get a fresh 60. Burks has got the shorty on him. Gets by him, but has no angle. But a nice pass to far side and a goal. Jack Chorus gets the better of Will Mark. I talked about the pros and cons of having an entire man down defense fresh. Five new faces. It cost them there. Chorus is so smart, and he backdoors Jordan Beck, who's ball watching. So Jordan Beck's in for a guy like Billy Dwan the third, who when you put him in a six on six set, because that's what you fear when you have five fresh guys. When the penalty's over, it's not so much the penalty, Cotter. It's after the penalty when you go six on six. Your best defenders aren't necessarily out there. Weirman gives chase. Alexo did a nice job to prevent him from initially picking up the ground ball, but he's able to scoop it. 7-7. Seven, seven. You know who gets the assist on that goal? John Tillman for the timeout. They've possessed it since that timeout. He knew his offense needed touches, needed to catch their breath. The momentum was shifting. Um, loses it initially, but picks it back up. First time we've seen 44 tonight, I think, in black. Back to Stovall. Whittier. Back to his left, now up top. Send it on the other way, Erksa. Mark makes the save. Defense is tired. If you're Syracuse, you need to possess the ball. You need to spin it around. You've been successful creating offense from the midfield. Spillina's starting to come to the party. Stevens, Rowan, Burt Whistle in the midfield right now, Clark. The question mark for both teams, would the short stick defensive midfielders hold up? Spillina. Over to Stevens. Went back to his right, but didn't have a shot. Now here's Spolina. Good look, fast, scores! That was ping pong passing. And Burt was so buried it. The suddenness of Spolina as a passer. That little shift. And Ajax not getting on his hands allows him to be patient. If you're Ajax, you have to engage there. You've got to get on Spolina's hands. If you don't get on his hands, he will feast. He's too good at surveying where his offensive players are and where they will be. Now we're going back and forth. Burt Whistle gets his first goal after Missing the opener with an injury. And we're back to Wehrman and Cole. Wehrman jumped. I believe that's two this half, two part. That's critical. Because when you have two, you're worried about getting the penalty, and then you're not as quick as you want to be. Against this team and yes. their man up unit, which is deadly. It, it's twofold, though. It's, it's going man down, but it... It also, in the back of your mind, you don't want to be overly aggressive because it's a penalty every time you jump. Right, three. So, so he's going to be slow to go. Yeah, every three face-off violations in a half, and then every subsequent yes. violation is a 30-second penalty. That is a critical piece to this fourth quarter. We're in with two violations. Leo. Shoots that one high. Seven left in the third quarter, 39 to shoot. Oh, couldn't get it to English, chases it down. Still 25 to shoot, back to Spolina.
so good with the body, Zapatello. Look at his feet, too. Never overplays. Leo shoots. McNaney. Follow up goes over the top. Good hustle by Moulet to keep possession with Syracuse. Eight seconds. Hiltz shoots. Wow, I can't believe he even got that shot off. Good on him to track down the ground ball and get one off. Buckle up, big boy. Here we go. Stars are heating up. Joey Spilina, one move, two move, and the goal. Great pass by Erksa and the cut and score by Chorus. Syracuse up by a goal, heading to the fourth. Syracuse goalie Will Mark, the captain, Clark. He was sensational in the third quarter, made six saves in that third quarter alone. The first quarter, the Terps kind of got to him a little bit, but his play in the last two quarters has been spectacular, making ridiculous stop after ridiculous stop, leaving his feet doing everything he possibly can to elevate the play of his defense. Born and raised in Northern California, bet on himself, went to a couple high schools where he wasn't even the starting goalie, went to LIU and then transferred here. He's one of the best in the business. Battle the faceoff dot continues. Won that time by Maryland to start this fourth quarter. Couldn't ask for anything more here, Clark. One goal game heading to the fourth in the dome. Play we just showed you from Will Mark limiting the Syracuse team. Just a couple of goals in that third quarter, or this uh, Maryland team rather, just a couple of goals in that third. Erks are trying to work on the short. He has a little bit of space. Too high though, and a race for the ball won by Maryland. Closest to the ball when it goes out of bounds, gets possession. If I'm Erks, uh... I am taking my defender in as much space as possible and speed dodging. He is so fast, one in black. Syracusa inverted, 38 in black. Scores! And it's Ursa. That is a breakdown by the Syracuse defense. When the ball went out of bounds, when Irksa first shot and missed, they needed to switch and find that matchup with Figueres on Irksa. They never switched back. Irksa has a short stick on him and a freshman in Jake Spolina, who's got the upside, but he shouldn't be defending Maryland's top option, who is an attacker. That is a breakdown in communication because you had an opportunity to switch Figueres 11 and white back to Irksa, and you didn't. Hat trick for Irks on the night. We are once again not in the eight. Cole wins it. And again, look at the athleticism from Cole keeping possession. He's put everyone on alert. The question was could he make the jump? The answer is what? Well, he's made it, and it's pretty clear today. First three games, maybe you had a little bit of wonderment about the competition. Not so much today. This is a first-team All-American in 2022. Maryland's all-time leader in face-off wins. All-time. And Mason Cohn has won the big, big face-offs in this game. Season-high five points for Urza. Burt Whistle shoots. That may have hit the outside of the cage. Stays with Syracuse. Hiltz put it in play. Off a shot. I thought Hiltz was really smart to box out, but not go too far behind the end line. Rolla scores on the run. He's showing us the full repertoire tonight. 
Lefty step down. Righty twister. Lefty on the run. A master class in terms of shooting versatility. The two-handed gem from St. John's in Maryland. What an absolute hammer. And the release was nasty. Saw that stutter step too, just allowed him to free up his hands. Second career hat trick for Roa. Neither of these teams is allowing this game to get beyond a one goal game. Beautiful win by Weirman. And the action to get the ball quickly into the offensive end. Weirman can't shoot. He opts to pass off and sub off. Urza feels it, shoots, scores! He's too fast, Cotter. I've been saying it all night. The speed kills. Figueres, who's defending him, was out with an ACL injury his true freshman season. He's back, and he's their number one cover defender. You see the first step and then the blazing speed to get above goal line extended. And then the jumper. Honestly, I think if you're Syracuse, you might want to deny him the ball at X. Make it really hard for him to get the ball. That's his sixth point, but I just don't think anyone on this field can defend him. That time, Cone with the violation. So Weirman's won a couple. All part of this back and forth game we've got here in the fourth quarter. Now once again, even up. Whittier, down the alley. He wants his left, 13 in black. He'll roll back to his left hand. Molliver. Gets it up top to Murphy. Kelly on the far side, working on the short. Remember, Kelly's a former attack, but now we've got a whistle. Looks like an injury. Yeah, an injury to a Syracuse player. Nick Kikamo. <laughs> This is Kakemo's first start of the season. Caden really Cole, who's in now, 33 and white, started the first three games. So he's got the experience. He was a starter a season ago. You have some depth there if you're Syracuse. Yeah, two-time team captain as well, Clark. So it's not a drop. Erksa, that's a beautiful job by Fagaris. And Rice comes out of there with it. And he can move. Hiltz to the middle of the field. Slams on the brakes. Figueres answered the bell because Erksa relentlessly was, was going after him. And Figueres said, I had enough. Because part of me was thinking, you deny it, X. If you're Syracuse, or you drop Sam Alexo, who's probably your best athlete defensively from long stick, maybe to close. Figueres said, not yet. Thompson shoots high. <laughs> Finn's frustrated a little bit at his shooting today. It's two for 13 coming in to tonight. And he's been automatic in his career. So as a shooter, you start thinking too much. Leo. Gate told us earlier this year, watch out for Leo. And Gate, he throws around compliments like he throws around manhole <laughs> covers, right? He said Leo is going to have a big year and he's having a huge game today. His classmate who came in as the number one rated recruit defensively, Riley Figueres, had a matchup with his hands full. He won that version. And Michael Leo. And Luke Roa, two sophomore midfielders, when the close defense of Maryland's been so stingy, they both have hat tricks. So crafty, Leo, and he is confident when he has the rock. You saw him throwing BTBs and going underneath his defender. 
celebrations after he scores. He wants the rock. The moment isn't too big. Cone. Wins another big draw. They're all big in this game, and especially now in the fourth. And remember, you have the two violations from Weirman that carry over. So how quick is he to time a whistle? Because if he doesn't time it correctly, this team goes extra man on a power play. Roa shoots, and he scores! From our vantage point, I'm watching Luke Roa go down the alley. I'm thinking he goes low and away on a lefty goalie to that far pipe. Logan doesn't know how that squeaks by. You're not on the hands of a shooter like that. You have to engage. We saw too many opportunities for these midfielders to have their hands free and rip. And I'll say it again, the versatility of Luke Roa. Two lefty goals, two righty goals. Lefty on the run, righty on the run, righty twister. And he's having the game of his life tonight. Cohn wins it initially, but loses his footing. Chorus scores! What a turn of events! Chorus picks up the ground ball from the wing and takes it all the way to the house. It didn't look like Mark stepped to the ball here. Chorus is on the wing. They don't pick him up. There was no pop or step from Mark. Maybe he thought he was going high there. Typically, you see Will Mark will explode with that front foot, stepping to the ball. He's flat-footed on that shot. Chorus squeaks it by him. How about this? Typically, you see an, an LSM and, a, and usually a short stick D midi on the wings on, on a face-off. They've got chorus on the wings of a face-off, an offensive guy. Because these midfielders are kind of throwbacks. Chorus, Stevens for Syracuse, English for Syracuse. They're out of the old school mode. Throw them on a wing. Let them play defense. Let them play offense. And those guys are going to project so well at the next level in the PLL because they can do a little bit of everything. Three goals combined in 36 seconds. Leo. Lay. Trying a two-man game with Finn Thompson. Now Thompson's got it. Gets it to Spolina. Hiltz, back to Spolina. Had a step, now rolls back, shoots. McNaney's there to make the six. Spolina got it back. Couldn't get anything on that second shot after the rebound. Spolina somehow on that possession did not have Ajax Zapatello on him. Right, it was Canfield who was checking him. Right? Yeah, Zapatello somehow got switched off Spolina and was in the interior of the defense. So Spolina's eyes lit up. He was going to the rack. McNaney denied him, and now Maryland with possession down a goal. Syracusa sends it over to Spanos. Rice is checking him. Molliver. Trying to use a Spanos pick. Gets it to Erickson. Gets pushed. Now the flag comes out. Syracuse doesn't like this call. I think it's a legitimate call, though. If you, if you push a guy in the back and he goes here, it looks thing. like it. He's going to do 30 seconds. Garris doesn't like it. He's pleading his case. Kakemo is there as well. Point 11, point 11, pushing for possession. 30 seconds. Let's take a little look at this. 
I mean, to me, if you push a guy in the back and he loses his foot, you have from to make the back the or the front side area. That's no, from that's the from the back. That's from the back. I got you. Yeah, that's a how no you, you can't not make no, that call. It's a no brainer. It's a no brainer. We talk a lot about Syracuse's offense and their man up. This is a dangerous unit because you have a lefty shooter in Kelly, 45 in black, the righty shooter in Murphy, 55. Those guys will stretch a defense and then Maltz is inside. So it's pick your poison between those three. That's Kelly and Erksa. Near side to Murph. Inside, beautiful movement, and Maltz buries it. What did you just tell us might happen? Maltz inside. Balanced extra man units have an outside threat, and they have someone who can can it and deliver in the paint. For the Terps, it's the fifth year senior, Daniel Maltz, tying it at 11. Maryland had a three-goal lead in the first half. Syracuse a two-goal advantage in the second. But we're all nodded, Clark, because of great individual play. Luke Roa and then Erksa has kept Maryland in it, oftentimes giving them the lead here in the second half. How about the game by Leo? Leo's been incredible. Roa, Erksa, Leo, all sophomores. Roa gets down the alley. There's no engagement, no contact in his hands. Too easy. And then Chorus, to your point, they keep him on a wing for instant offense. And then the master of the paint, Danny Maltz. Roa and Leo, two midfielders, have carried the offense for Syracuse. There you see Chorus and a big face off here, which is going to be won by Weirman. Nearly even on the faceoff dot today, too. We hope we'd see that, and we have. This game's had everything we thought it would. It's the game of the month. Had the storylines of the team that has 11 national titles and the best player in the world back as their coach. Are they back? Well, they have to play the standard in the sport tonight. John Tillman and the Maryland Terps over the last decade, no team has won like them. Erksa got caught. Oh, and then a hit late. Well, Syracuse is lucky they didn't get a call yeah. the whistle there. It's going to be a procedure call against Maryland. So possession to Cuse. Yeah, it looked like Mark maybe was in the crease. And there was some interference there by Maryland. Six and a half to go, all tied up. Burt Whistle and Roa making their way onto the field. And you have a short stick on Roa, who has flexibility to go left or right. He goes right and gets free a bit, but the slide comes to help out. Now he wants to get it to Spolina. Instead goes on the far side to Moulet. And because of that help, Moulet has a short stick on him. They help the Roa matchup. There is a switch. He wants to dodge it. He's coming near side. Now back to his right, pass in front, Hiltz couldn't corral it. What an effort by Roa to keep possession for Syracuse. Check that, that was Burt Whistle on the far side. Not a fresh 60 though. Yeah, they got 20 to shoot. Roa again. Short stick Sharky on him. Bird whistle back to Roa. Three to shoot, gotta get it done. Can't get it through McNaney. That was dangerous shooting that late. You might have been better off rolling it out, getting your personnel on. They kind of got lucky there that McNaney didn't make that stop and have a short stick defensive midfielder flying out of the gate to create some offense. Instead, Maryland will settle in 6v6. Look at right, way out to check course. It's 
Spanos will invert and look to attack on the short. Erksa. Spanos can't get free. Slide comes. Syracusa shoots off the pipe. Ooh. A lot of heat on that shot. Yeah, that hit the pipe. That's a fresh 60. It's a reset. We're talking about two-handed players. 38 and black, Syracusa is one of them. Oliver, checked by Kakamo. Good to see him back in the game. 28 and white. After he hobbled off moments ago, Spanish defender falls down. He gets a little bit of an inch, and he makes the most of it. Cork, what quick thinking. Defender fell down, he immediately went to the rack. Spanos is so comfortable in that spot. Nate Levine, 34 in white. A reserve long stick midi and close defender a year ago. Now is a short stick because of the depth issues. Spanos is a former high school attackman who's so comfortable back at X. I watched this kid in high school. His eyes are always up. He understands space back there. And to your point, once he got Levine on that stutter, the low angle shot with the left hand, Spanos delivers. Maryland back on top. You see, it's the first time they've led in some time since about the midpoint of the third quarter. Gate has two timeouts, Tillman one. Can't call it in the middle of the field there. Have to be in your box. Juan with a nice ground ball, but then he throws it away. Zap throws it away. Syracuse got lucky there, Cotter. Now they look to move quickly. Hiltz wanted to, but the official slowed him down. You feel the tension oh, in the dome. Heightened at three and a half to go. Leo out of the box. Full head of steam on the far side. Tries to get it inside and tops it over the shoulder. Couldn't get anything on the shot. Defended well in the crease. I don't know if that was a shot or he's trying to pass it to Spalina at X. Canfield, nice catch. Nice job getting it over to Brennan. Good work in the middle of the field. Now Whittier. He wants his left hand here. Working on Rice, the veteran. Defenders fall down, he shoots it high. Maryland can take it under two minutes to play and we'll get a timeout. The dead ball, Gary Gate wants to talk things over. Will Mark, who's had a heck of a game, and especially in the second half, in goal for Syracuse. That was a smart timeout by Gary Gate. You have the two. You want your defense rested. And you have to have your matchups here. Get your top six here. I would not be surprised if you see Jake Stevens or Sammy English. Both are offensive midfielders as we know them, but they played two way at Princeton. You don't have the depth at short stick D midi. That is probably your Achilles heel at this stage of the season. You have young guys who are gonna be really good, but don't have the experience. I'd be really surprised if you don't see Stevens or English in this spot. Not just to play defense, Cotter, but if you get the ball, you have really elite sticks on the field because those guys will just stay or create transition. So I'd be shocked if you don't see 14 in white or 15 in white take a defensive shift here. You saw Syracuse's upcoming schedule. Neither one of these two teams ducking anybody. Their schedules are brutal going forward. Look what Maryland's got. Princeton at Notre Dame and Virginia before they start Big Ten play. I looked at Maryland's schedule. Over the last two years, every single team on their schedule has made the NCAA tournament. I mean, it is Incredible the level of difficulty. In a team like this, coached by John Tillman, they will be playing their best ball and they will be battle tested as anyone. 
come May. Nobody will be more battle-tested than these two teams coming out of this game in the third week of February. This is an early season matchup that is testing and teaching both these coaches a lot about their players and their teams. See, I'm surprised you don't see Stevens or English here. Because like I said, it's not just the stop. It's the ability to clear the ball and potentially trap one of the offensive players from Maryland if you make the stop when you have Stevens or English going on the other end. 39 to shoot coming out of the timeout. Maryland up a goal with possession. They'll get it in Irks' stick up top. They're in a zone here. Yeah, they'll spin it over to Chorus. That's smart as well with the shot clock. It'll take Maryland time to figure it out. Brennan thought about letting it loose. Shot clock down to 10. Tried to skip it over to Murphy, gets deflected. He'll stay with Maryland, but just five to shoot. First year defensive coordinator John Orderna with a little bit of a chess match. Going in zone, it took Maryland time to figure it out. There was only a little under 30 seconds left on the shot clock. They didn't figure it out. They didn't recalibrate and get into their zone offense in time. And Maryland forced to send the ball into the corner and take the shot by shot clock violation. Now here comes Cuse. Under two to play. Roa. Stevens. Over to Hiltz. Hiltz angling to the goal. He's going to roll back. Defended well as Canfield's all over. Mulay scores! Wow! The perseverance of Owen Hiltz. He's getting mugged here on this matchup. The physicality. He kept his balance. And Christian Muley, who is a left-handed player, cut him with his off hand and scores an incredible goal on the crease. Gate feels it, the dome feels it. And on a quiet night for the attack unit, Muley comes up with a monster of a goal. This minute and five is gonna be wild. You got the two violations on Weirman. Wow, and it was Cole who jumped. I, it, it looked like the official might have pointed the other way first and said, no, it's against Cone. So possession to Maryland. And that's two for Cone, too, now. One timeout on the board for each team. Chorus. Working on Rice. And now Tillman will use that timeout. Shot clock is off. 40 seconds for Maryland to find that potential game winner. Guess what Tillman's going to draw up now? What do you think he's going to expect? Zone. You think he's going to expect that? He's going to expect zone. Gonna continue? He's going to have his team prepared to act quickly if defensive coordinator John Orderna throws a zone again. Because last time they were too slow to react. What are you going to do? What does what he draw up then to defeat that zone, you think? You have to have some shooters. The one player who hasn't been a regular in the offensive set is 45 in black, Daniel Kelly. He's your best time and room lefty shooter. I wouldn't be shocked if he's on the field. Because Tillman is going to hedge probably a little bit that there might be zone. So if there's zone, you need a zone buster on both sides. You have Owen Murphy with the right hand, Daniel Kelly with the left. But Oderna, with the chess match, is probably thinking, Maybe Tillman and Mike Phipps, the right. offensive coordinator, are going to think zone offense, so let's see what they do. Or start out in zone and jump out of it immediately. You prepare for moments like this. Defensively, you have to have packages where you show one thing and you can quickly react out of another. Because that 
forces the offense to waste time and to all get on the same page. Goalies have both been fantastic today. Face-offs, Maryland owns it 15 to 13. I mean, <laughs> almost 50-50. Heavyweight match, man. Here we are, tied at 12, 40 seconds to go. The fourth and fifth ranked teams in the country, both undefeated coming in. And if they go man, there's one player that has to touch the ball. It's 10 in black, Braden Erksa. Third like man, man yep. third man. Erksa has to touch the ball here. He's too fast. He's owned matchups. Syracuse will get it going. 30 seconds. Game clock is shorter than the shot clock, so that's irrelevant. Rice is on Syracuse way out. Syracuse wanted to use a chorus pick, didn't get it. Here comes Erksa. Trying to run by Figueres. Can't do that. Spanos inside to Molliver. Just can't get it to go. Two seconds. That's going to do it. Expect anything else. Overtime from the Dome. If we ever deserve bonus lacrosse, it's right now. Who's not enjoying this? We're gonna catch our breath. If you gotta go make a sandwich, get a snack, <laughs> get a cold beverage from the refrigerator, do it now because we have got overtime lacrosse from the Dome coming up. Maryland 12, Syracuse 12 as we head to overtime here inside JMA Wireless Dome. Chris Cotter, Paul Carcaterra with you. It has lived up to all the hype. Man, we had some action in that second half, especially the fourth quarter. Off the face-off, Jack Chorus is there for a reason. Instant offense, picking up the ground ball and going the distance. The passing by Maryland, the anticipation, the stutter of Eric Spanos. Cotter, this game has had it all. When it looked like Owen Hills was dead to rights, he found a way to find Grad transfer, Christian Mule. I need an IV, man. <laughs> you don't have time. You got to face this thing off right now. By the way, we've talked a lot about, as you see, the overtime rules about face-offs and how both of these face-off men have two violations. They're clean now into the, into the overtime period, so that's not an issue. This game is 12-12. It easily could be 17-17. And I say this because the face-off battle has been so equal. The goaltending, stealing potential goals by both netminders, Logan McNaney, Will Mark. This game has had everything you would want. People sometimes say it's too early to have lacrosse in February. For all you haters, it's not. Watch this game. Yeah, you can't tell those here at the Dome that it's too early. They're all on their feet. Look at them, Paul. Every single one of them and showing their appreciation with the standing ovation as these two teams took the field for overtime. Look below us. No one is sitting down. Next goal wins it. Cone and Weirman. They've been battling all night long, and it continues into the overtime. Weirman wins it to himself. He can shoot, instead he passes it off, and boy, I thought that might have been the opportunity for Molliver. Both teams sub out. Maryland with the first possession, six on six here in the overtime. The all-time leader in face-off wins for the University of Maryland, Luke Weirman. No one has won more, no one's been in more bigger spots than him. Syracuse to his left. Erksa on Figueres. Figueres loses his footing. He's got a short stick. He's sticking this matchup. You have to support if you're Syracuse. Here comes Dwan. And now Molliver. So Dwan is recovered to check Erksa. Goes over the pick. Chorus. Now he's on the shorty. Up top, Murphy shoots wide, and the target stays with Maryland. That boy can sling it. Man, 20 seconds to shoot. 
Everybody on the edge of their seats. Cork's going to maul me when the game winner goes in, I promise you. That was high, no call. Might have been his teammates. Sirkusa loses it. Juan picks it out of the air. Now he gets leveled. Kakemo comes out of there with it. What a ground ball by Billy Dwan the third. He got hammered some way. He was able to hold it and goose it. Now English comes on the field to clear it. Crowd amps it up just a little bit, just a notch higher. There hasn't been a timeout yet. Both coaches letting this game be decided by the players. Gates in the back pocket of one of the refs. If he needs to call a timeout, if there's trouble. Leo, down the alley, shoots. And it's a shot, stays with Spolina. In a fresh 60. Yep, fresh 60. Over to English. Rowe gonna give him a pick. Shoots! Just wide on the bouncer. It looked like there was a little hesitation by Sammy English, 15 and white. He had the look. He had the separation. Spillane on Ajax. Ajax comes around the pick. Again, back to English up top. Hiltz. Check it, that's Leo. Leo shoots! Wide, man, every shot. So much tension on it. 25 to shoot now. Moulet backs it up. We'll get one of those timeouts right now. And it'll be Gary Gates with 25 to shoot. Wants to talk things over. What's Pat March going to dial up? Pat March, the offensive coordinator last year. Syracuse, with so many freshmen, were third in the nation in efficiency. Pat March is masterful in these spots. Understands his personnel, the matchups, and the spacing. There you see March in the orange hat, former Vermont head coach. And as much as you'd want Joey Spelina involved in dictating this final play, the matchups are in your midfield. Your midfield has made the plays. Spelina's been blanketed by Ajax Zapatello. He's had some highs in that matchup, but Zapatello's been so sturdy in terms of his physicality and, and playing on goal line extended. I'd be really surprised if he doesn't attack the short stick D middies. And this offense is generated from the midfield. If you're newer to the game, you can only have four long poles on the field at any one time. That means two players have to be defended by short stick D middies. Those are the matchups you want if you're an offensive coordinator, figuring out how to get those favorable matchups. And Syracuse's offensive middies all can go to the rack. It's not like one is an off-ball guy that just can shoot from the outside. Michael Leo can go to the rack. Rowe has been sensational tonight. Stevens. English just showed you. So you have so many options if you're Pat March. I don't expect Jesse Bernhardt to go zone. He hasn't shown zone all night. Leo, Roa, and English will be the midfielders coming out for Syracuse. Yeah, they're in man. And Leo's gonna start with the ball, and he has a shorty on him. And he's got sky-high confidence. Nick Red will check him. He might not give this ball up. Gives it to Hiltz, now back to Leo. Watch Hiltz on the pick game here. Leo dives, scores! The game winner! The officials will be talking it over. No, oh, they'll wave it off! They're waving it off! They'll wave it off for in the crease! There's a helmet on the field, too. Chaos, if you will. Maryland wants to know why the whistle was blown.
You see Jesse Bernhardt and Tillman. Let's let him talk here. The officials are gonna take a look at that. They're gonna review it, obviously. And they see what we see. And they see All right, here we go. what you will see at home. Back to the goal. This is what's being reviewed. Does he step in the crease prior? No. Does he land in the goal mouth? The answer is yes, but is he pushed in the goal mouth? There's a lot to chew on here. You can land in the goal mouth as a result of defensive pressure. And, and, and keep in mind, it was waved off on the field, so it has to be enough to make them overturn it. He does not step in the crease prior to the ball crossing That's clear. the goal plate. That is clear. He is in the goal mouth, but is he pushed in the goal mouth? The officials got together right away, right away on it, and to their credit, they did make a pretty quick call on it. You got to admit this, Gary Gates loving this. This is so much fun for him to be a part of this right now in the dome. Of course, he wants this call to go his way and win the game. Take one last look. Was he pushed? I don't think he was He was pushed. not pushed. Okay. He definitely landed in the goal mouth. Yeah. Right. You cannot land in the goal mouth unless the it's from circle. defensive pressure. The half circle within the crease. The only time you can land there is from defensive pressure. Pushed into the goal mouth. After review, no goal. We're going to set the clock at 113 in 80 seconds. The crowd here, obviously, very pro Syracuse. Can't believe it. They're letting the officials know. I just think it's the right call. It's the rule. I think they feel like... Leah was pushed into the goal mouth. I, I, I didn't see it. I don't think Clear there was enough, enough pressure to call that a push. Clear enough to overturn that call. It's an incredible effort. If he avoids the goal mouth, the game's over. But he landed in the goal mouth. It's, there, it's been there for the last few seasons to protect goalies. And the call goes against Syracuse. Now, what do you do? Disappointment, but you got to fight back and play on the defensive end. A minute left to go in the OT. Shot, score the game winner! D. Mitty George Stamos, of all things, I mean, of all players, who could it possibly be for the game winner for Testudo? And it's George Stamos. I'm shocked Stamos is on the field and he didn't come off through the box. But there was a breakdown. You said they got to play. There's nothing else you can do other than get in the hole, match up. Syracuse looks a little discombobulated after the call. They don't have the personnel in the hole. You need to play defense from inside out. Those defenders were trailing Stamos. Corning boy from upstate New York comes to the dome. And the hero is Stamos. an unlikely Stamos. <laughs> the redshirt freshman from Alexandria, Virginia. Connor, I think Cuse was thinking too much of what just happened rather than what needs to happen. What a game from Syracuse. Back and forth we went all night long, and in the end, Maryland in overtime on the road getting the win for Paul Carcaterra and our entire crew here in the Dome. I'm Chris Cotter. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time. What a season we have on tap.